Welcome, Marvel. You and your tink top. Wow. Welcome, Marvel, to the Jen Shilling Podcast. You know where you are. How many fingers am I holding up? He doesn't know how to count. This episode is brought to you by Postmates. <laughs> Guys, are you craving Taco Bell right now? Because I feel like I may be out of line here, but I feel like some of you are craving Taco Bell. Are you a mind reader? Are you psychic? <sighs> Listen, okay, I'm not going to get into details, but not I think clickbait? you're craving Taco Bell. If you use code Jen and Julian on Postmates... It's a good thing, okay? And you can get the Taco Bell. You get $100 off free delivery credits for your first seven days. So use code Jen and Julie. That's just our names next to each other. Download the Postmates app. Get food. Use our names. The end. We postmated so much food this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like a really great thing for when you're hosting. Mm-hmm. Like we had uh, Jeff... Jeff and his girlfriend came over last night. We watched the fights together. Who is awesome, by the way. I fucking love her. She's pretty great. I fucking love her. Her name's Rachel. She was making me laugh so hard. I think it's the first girlfriend of Jeff that I've ever met. Yeah, sorry. We're not trying to talk about you, Jeff. I love you, Jeff. We're talking about you. (laughs) (laughs) No, we got to hang out with Jeff, Jolene, Rachel. It was fun. But before, like, they have, you know, different diet, dietary needs and different food preferences than us. So... You know, I was like, what What do you eat? And Which we're like, used to, because it's usually us that are the ones that are like, oh, yeah, no, it's no problem. We just can't eat anything. <laughs> yeah, because he's ketogenic, and that's, you know, a very specific diet. So mm-hmm. I um, I was like, what do you eat? He was like, does this restaurant deliver to you? And I was like, yep, it's on Postmates. He was like, this is what I want. Okay, got it. <laughs> and then that's it. Like, I don't have to cook. It's, like, amazing. Then we can all sit and eat. I mean, all sit and eat. But, like, whatever we're supposed to eat, you know? It's lovely. Um, so we're alive. The earthquake didn't kill us. We're oh, safe. Geez. We've, I've had so many people reach out and like also on Twitter, just messages all kind of all over the place. Yeah. Thank you guys for that. That's thank very you. thoughtful and kind. I've yeah. also talked to both of my parents. Same, same. My brother. <laughs> yeah. I talked to my mom. Uh, so we were on stream. There's actually a clip. We were uh, streaming live. live when the second earthquake hit, which was the bigger one. And well, why don't you talk about the first one, Fourth of July one? Rewind. <laughs> the first no, earthquake, we bed. were uh, in bed, slowly loafing our way awake, and it hit, and we start feeling it, and it's just like, it just kind of feels like things are just like slowly shaking. You're like, oh, okay, there's an earthquake, and we look at Bunny's cage, and she's just standing up. <laughs> do the thing what was she doing she was doing the no the who was the oh Lil Kim Lil dancing Kim. <laughs> that's what Bunny looked like she was just standing in her crate and it was just like <laughs> what's up she wasn't scared though she was just like curious no. like the earthquakes never scared Bunny in fact when the second one hit we were you were very concerned about like her yeah, we were streaming live I took my headset off you took your headset off and you went right to Bunny we were like Bunny it's okay it's okay but she was like cool she was yeah. like what is this okay but it was it was gnarly. So the first one hit, and it was like shaky, shaky. We're like, damn, that was an earthquake. But it wasn't like really scary or anything. We just kind of felt it. It was like, okay, we felt that. that. that I feel like that's the kind that I've felt since I've lived in Southern California. Where Same, it's honestly. A little short, and then it's over, and then you're like, okay. And it never feels like it's increasing. It's all just this like steady shake, shake, dead. But then the second one came when we were streaming, and that one was gnarly because... It was not fun. It was not fun. It was the way... It th- it's very, very, very difficult to describe what it feels like to experience an earthquake like that to anyone who hasn't experienced it. There's no real way to relate it to another experience in life. It's like the earth is fucking shaking. Like nothing that you think matters matters anymore because the earth is shaking Mm. and you like you don't know when it's going to stop you don't know if it's going to get worse you don't know you just don't know anything and you feel so small and insignificant so it was shaking it was shaking my mic arm was going like this the camera was shaking on stream and we looked outside and the pool is just like this fucking rapids there's like waves and it's crashing over it was just bizarre and then it started to get a little crazier it was like a little bit increased in Mm. the middle there and, and, you know, it got kind of spooky and then it slowly died down, but it lasted close to a minute for us. Yeah. Um, and I've, I'm 27. I've been in Southern California all 27 years of my life. That was the worst one I've experienced. Um, and you were a baby in the 94 Northridge. I was a baby in the 94 uh, Northridge earthquake. So technically I've experienced worse, but I don't remember it because I was two. 
years old. Um, After that earthquake, though, they did a lot of retrofitting in like Santa Monica and other areas like where you grew up, which is a good thing. Yeah. You know, they go into old buildings or like parking structures especially are pretty vulnerable. They've retrofit a lot of those. Because the damage of the 94 earthquake was, from what I've read, is was not fun no, for a lot of people. And people lost their homes and, you know. That was a gnarly one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and we, uh, like, four, four or five years ago, Jen and I used to live in Westwood. And there was an earthquake where the epicenter was Westwood. So we were on top <laughs> of the epicenter. Uh, yeah. So, and well, that one was when we were talking about how the dogs reacted... During that Westwood earthquake, which was, I think, only like a four or something like that. But when the epicenter is under you, I, like, I, listen, I'm not a, a, an earthquake. Are you a seismologist? I'm not a seismologist. <laughs> I don't know Are you a mixologist? I'm a mixologist. But when the earthquake is pretty shallow, or obviously if you're closer to the epicenter, it's more violent shaking. Like I've seen a lot of clips, obviously, of earthquakes on Twitter and the internet. You know, when people are at the epicenter, it is very violent. It is very terrifying. And it can make a four feel like a nine. Exactly. Kind of, yeah. And, um, well, not really, but sort of. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. It can, well, it feels like a much more intense number on the Richter scale. When you're close, yeah. yeah. Because it was a seven... 0.1 magnitude earthquake, the one that we had, but because we're a hundred miles away from the epicenter, it didn't feel that bad. It, but for those people that are near that, that mm -hmm. is a terrible, Terrifying. terrible yeah. earthquake. And you see videos of like the liquor store and things like that, where things are just completely thrown everywhere. You're like, okay, well that's right. the epicenter. So the one in Westwood that we had, the epicenter was literally in Westwood mm -hmm. and it was only about a four, but that was... That was the one where the guy jumps onto the desk on the news station. Yeah. That was that one. Yeah. And if an earthquake is more shallow, it feels very shaky and very vibrating. And if it's pretty deep, it, that, those are like the rocking ones. But the, the one in Westwood was either kind of shallow or just like directly underneath us because the like, shaking oh, was very violent. Yeah, it was like vibrating. It woke us up out of our sleep. And that's when the dogs all started barking. They're like freaking out. That's that's the kind of one where like all of your stuff is making noise. Like everything is the just rattling. Make, yeah. yeah, yeah. But the one that we had. It's like the scene in a, in a <laughs> superhero movie when the bad guy's flying in and it's just like, bum, 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 you know. Right. Like, the one that we had um, the other day. If the, the closest thing I could compare it to is being on a, a rocking, moving ship. But like you're rocking pretty fast. And there is the most eerie thing about that is that there is no sound other than your house making noise and our pool splashing. There's no sound. So like the world, it just sounds quiet. Everything sounds silent, but then you'll hear like the door was open. So the door was sort of like slapping the door frame. And like, so the dogs aren't alert. They're not like... Oh, things are falling. But I was afraid that, you know, we've seen Bunny when she gets in that anxious state. She'll run into the yard. Like, we don't know what she would do. If she would try and jump out of the yard. Like, it's it's scary. So I wanted to make sure that she was okay. Yeah, we because were like right on top of her. These guys might start barking. We already know what they'll but do. But they're not going to run away. They're not going <laughs> to run away. They're not going to panic. They're yeah. just going to be assholes. I don't know what Bunny's going to yeah. do. So I was pretty nervous yeah. for her. Because the first one, she was in her crate which made me feel a little better. Yeah, she's doing a little Kim dance in there. But that one, because the door was open, I was afraid that she was going to start panicking. And I don't know where she would go. It's very difficult to, you know, like she was great during the fireworks. We're lucky enough to live in a place where it's dry and we have hella fires. So people aren't really out here lighting a lot of fireworks. Not off. a lot. There are still some, but not nearly as much as like proper LA. But we kept the door closed and just made sure that there was like sound in the room and Bunny was totally fine. She didn't want to go to the bathroom outside during that like, you know, 7 to 10 p.m. ish, mm -hmm. which I didn't blame her, but yeah. we didn't have a problem at all. But yeah. I do think if we were in a place where there were loud fireworks, she would not enjoy them. But yeah, it was, it's fucking scary. Obviously, that's the largest earthquake that I've been in since I've lived here. Yeah. But you're right, though. I mean, now thinking back to the Westwood one, it was very different. This one was a, a slow shaking ship, is a, good, is a good way to describe it. But it was still. But it's the world. <laughs> it was, yeah, like, fuck, man. It's not just like your desk moving or like the shelf moving. It's like your whole fucking house and your pool and the ground underneath you and your cars in the garage, things like that. It's just like, fuck. 
I think the the kind scariest crazy. thing about an earthquake to me is that like we have a plan, you know, and we have a go bag and we have, you know, a basic understanding of what you should do in an earthquake, which is what most people try their best to have. Mm -hmm. But an earthquake comes at any time, anywhere. So you could have a plan and then be at a Shawn Mendes con concert and all of a sudden oh, it's like, shit. now you don't have a plan. At least I'm fucking going out in style. You I know? saw people tweeting that they were at the Shawn Mendes oh, concert. Oh, when it happened? Yeah, and oh, then it's wow. like, okay, you're, I was in, like, that was a random you're in this example. massive room full of people. Like, yeah. what's your plan now? Or yeah. you run to the grocery store. Or you're at a movie theater. I saw a lot of people were at a movie theater. Or, yeah. You know. Did you, you see the video of that <clears> restaurant <throat> in the epicenter? Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. The the, the light, light fixtures were st swinging and then you saw people start to panic a little bit yeah. and run around. Um, that that to me is more of a scary situation than anything, is being mm -hmm. in a public place with other people. Not only, like aside from the fact that you might not be with your loved ones, right? You're in a public place amongst other strangers mm -hmm. who may be reacting poorly or whatever to a situation like that, which just might make everything kind of worse. Right. Like I saw in that video, people were yelling and running and maybe not being like as, I don't know, mentally prepared or calm or whatever as it's calculated. It's hard to it's, stay it, calm. It, it is, it is. But it's like, it also, that sort of behavior can like induce more of it. Mm -hmm. It can create more panic. And <clears throat> and so I don't know, that that video was creepy because of the light fixtures, but also just because it's like, fuck, I forgot what people can, like people do sometimes. It's hard to stay calm. Yeah. Well, especially since, you know, when the 4th of July one happened, it was like, oh, it was just an earthquake, you know, and then you, you immediately go on Twitter, you look where the epicenter is. Is this the San Andreas fault? No. Oh, it, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. It was the surly... I don't know what it was called. Doesn't Valley, matter. Something. So then when we had the second one, it's on the same fault line. So now as of now, we still have a one in is a one in ten. I don't know. Her name is Dr. Lucy. Something, yeah. Something. I, yeah. You wanna look it up? She's dope. Yeah. Uh says we have about a one in ten or one in twenty chance of having a larger earthquake. Lucy Jones. Lucy Jones. Yeah. But we have a 9 out of 10 chance that that was the earthquake and today, that we're done. Today she tweeted, a day or two after every big earthquake of my career, we hear rumors that an even bigger earthquake is going to happen, but we are denying it to avoid a panic. This rumor is no more true than it was after Northridge, mm -hmm. Landers, or Hector Mine. There's also always someone who claims they know a big quake is coming. This is not a scientific assessment. Lucy out here spitting facts. Right. So because the 4th of July one happened on that fault line and then a larger one occurred on the same fault line, the biggest one now becomes the earthquake and the July 4th one is considered the foreshock. If we were to have a bigger earthquake on that same fault line, then that becomes the earthquake and the two previous are, are the foreshocks. Shock. Yeah. But anything after today, if it's smaller, is considered an aftershock. So hopefully... Fully, that one was considered the earthquake and that we're not getting a bigger one than that because I'm all fucking set. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I um, I actually just posted a picture, um, kind of a flat lay image with labels of our go bag. Yeah. And I might go over it right now. I think that might actually be kind of good to talk about. I don't know. People seem interested to know what we packed in our, in our emergency safety go bag where you have a bag packed for emergencies like... An earthquake, any sort of fire, natural disaster, yeah. fire, blackout, anything like that. Um, and so basically when the earthquake happened on the 5th, Jen and I, we were, like I said, we were live on stream. We took a pretty long BRB. We paused stream and um, and buffed the go back and kind of walk, walked ourselves through the plan a little bit. Of and what moved we were the Madrina's do. fridge. And moved a couple things around. We have a <laughs> fridge, like a mini fridge on a desk in the game room. Full so. of Madrina's coffee. So we lo Thank we you, put it Madrinas. on the floor and taped it shut because the last thing we want in a fucking earthquake is for a fridge full of coffee to slam on the ground right next to our dog who we rescued. Right. It's right by Bunny, which yeah. is why we put it on the ground and then taped it shut. Um, but I mean... We also just, zip tied some of our uh, kitchen cabinets. Yes. Closed. And then when we had company last night, I was like, let me cut these zip ties off so I could get you some water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll give you... I'll give you the little like a short rundown of like what we have, um, and some of them I've kind of put put in there on my own accord, and some of them I've looked up for being like good things to have in a go bag. Mm -hmm. But um, so we have a fanny pack, and inside the fanny pack I have things like a multi tool, spare car key, pliers, 
battery zip ties, a knife, lighter, deodorant, phone cables, um, external power, and a can opener, a little low-profile can opener that we just got. Uh, we have spare glasses for Jenna and contacts. We have a car AC adapter. Um, we have dog food, dog calming chews, and spare dog leashes and harnesses. We have a travel mug where the handle is actually a carabiner, so we can clip onto things. We have spare shoes, spare garbage bags. We have two large tarps, which I think is a pretty huge thing to have in a go bag because it's super cheap to buy, and it's, it doesn't take up much space in the bag, but in a situation where you need to stay dry, like those are very important. Tarps have a lot of uses. A lot of uses. Tarps and duct tape. Um, we have N95 respirators, which I kept. I bought a box for when the fires happened, and we kept them, so we put a bunch in the go bag. We have some water bottles, and then we have self-filtering water bottle ca- canteens where it's like you can fill it up with river water, and it filters it so you can drink it. Uh, we have tablets, aqua tablets, which purify water. Spare contact lenses. I already got that. Um, Kermit's meds. Some spare cash. Um, mixed nuts, like a giant couple of bags of mixed nuts. Which and, Peach has gotten into a couple which times. Which Peach, Peach has found her way into the go bag. So now <laughs> when emergencies are afoot, we have to also watch out for our food-driven dog <laughs> to not ruin everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have cans of beans, peanut butter. Um, we have this lantern that is crank-powered, and it also serves as a USB charger. So in a situation where you have zero power, and zero external batteries. You can crank charge the lantern, and not only will it provide light, but it provides juice that you can plug your phone into. So that's really nice. Um, then another lantern, a couple of flashlights, feminine products, ibuprofen, um, freeze dried dog food. Freeze dried dog too. food. Oh uh, yeah, freeze dried is important to mm-hmm. know. Yeah, so it stays good. Umbrella, and that's kind of it. I mean, um, you well, know, we have we're a big sleeping bag too. Yeah, so not in the bag. There's a sleeping bag, a tent, a dog crate that we care, take with us. And lately, like the go bag is right there. Yeah, uh, we've been taking it with us to every single room in the house that we go to. So if we go to bed, we bring it to our bedroom. If we go to the stream, we put it in the stream room. We go to just well, because we're still room. on high alert, earthquake watch. Which, by the way, Bunny is <clears> right here. Um, and we were talking about it the other day, like. We kind of have an ideal situation for if anything were to happen because we're all always in the same room. Yeah. So. Yeah, but we're I mean that's you know even that's scary as well. It's like okay, you, we have a plan for each room of our house because we're usually all together in the mm-hmm. same room. You know, a, a heavy desk or table or something to get under for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Um, but you know, you could just go upstairs and be in the shower for ten minutes. <laughs> It's just, it's yeah. wild. It's a wild concept. I know. It's a wild natural disaster where all of a sudden everything you've planned for is like, doesn't fucking matter. You're in the bathtub. What are you going to do now? <laughs> I know. Like you spent all this time planning and prepping. You're like, I'm going to run to the store real quick. And then the earthquake hits. That's, you know what I mean? That's so. crazy, man. But you know, there's one thing that you can't pack in a go bag, and it's Julian, pizza. Julian, Julian. Postmates will bring you pizza, Come though, on, even dude. when there's an earthquake. Postmates doesn't care. Earthquake be like, shake. Postmates be like, okay, what do you want to eat? Julian. So if you guys are um, hungry in an earthquake or not in an earthquake, also use Postmates to deliver the food that you love to your mouth. With code Jen and Julian, $100 off delivery charges for the first seven days. Check it out. You can get pizza. You can get Taco Bell. I'm not reading your mind, but you definitely want both of those foods right now. Don't look into my eyes. Who doesn't? Don't look into my eyes. Julian. What? <laughs> phone lines are down, right? What? You, there's no power. You have your phone and you there's you know, you can't call anyone, but you like you, you can you got internet. What so let, the hell? Let's Julian. go on postmates. Three hundred and sixty five days a year, even during an earthquake. Julian. You just go on postmates if you've never used the app. You go on postmates and you type in your address. Don't worry, they won't dox you. And it tells you in your area what restaurants and establishments they can pick up food from and bring it to you so you can eat it. Um, It's super easy. You see the Postmate on a little map so you can see how how far they are. And um, if you need to have a snack to tide you over, you're like, "Uh, they're going to be here in like 10 minutes. I don't need a snack. I'll be okay. So then the food gets there and you eat it all. And then you're like, earthquake, schmirthquake. I just got fed. 
I don't even know how to respond to the things that you're saying right now. Use Postmates. <laughs> Code didn't join. Thank you, Postmates. No thanks to you, Julian. All thanks to me and Postmates. But mainly me. No, mainly Postmates. Anyways, though, we're good. Everybody's good. And yeah, it wasn't wasn't my favorite thing, but yay. Yeah, I hope everyone... what you sign up for when you live in, Yeah, I guess, all of California, it's, really. It, it is a scary thing, though. I mean, like, I got to say, like, you know, we're together, mm-hmm. you and me, and then we're all together with the dogs. But, like, being alone in something like that, I can imagine, is a, a pretty startling and unsettling experience. So... I feel for those of you who are in Southern California alone who might have had to go through that alone mm-hmm. and and kind of self soothe self soothe a little bit and and tell yourself, you know, it's it's scary and this is like literally the most like insignificant you could ever feel because mm-hmm. it's like when the earth shakes, you don't matter. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's a scary feeling, especially yeah. when you don't have someone to like sit there with you or hug or hold, yeah. you know. So I hope everyone's okay if you're in Southern California. I hope everything you know, is is safe and sound for you. But um, yeah, keep on high alert. Get together, even if it's not a go bag like of that size. Get get a little backpack with a couple of supplies just to have. Tuck it away in your closet or somewhere where you can grab it and go in a situation. Just a flashlight, first aid kit, battery. You know, stuff like that where you just you're not completely empty handed in a situation. You know, where you might want to just have a couple things. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I mean, we have blackouts and stuff in the summer because Mm -hmm. of the heat. And every time the power goes out, all of a sudden, Julian's like, be right back. He's got like four lanterns that he just cranks a few times and he like turns them on. He's like, here we go, baby, late. We're here, we're powered. You need a Mopi? Got a Mopi? Got a Mopi? Here, you need some charging? Like, we're just, he's so ready (laughs) for anything that that happens. It's really fun. It's kind of a fun thing. I don't know. I, I enjoy it. You what when also, when the power goes out and you're completely ready? Yeah, I imagine it's pretty fun. You're like showtime. Well, no, baby. no, I don't mean I don't mean any natural disaster is fun. I mean when you like you sort of treat like emergency prep as a hobby a little bit, right? So you like you take pride in like what you're getting to prepare and what, what's going in the bag and like yeah. how to use everything, and you go through the the drills and it becomes like oh, I enjoy flashlights or I enjoy and these we all little know devices and little things like that. So. Yeah, so all good. We're safe. Um, <laughs> but we do have power, right? This That's how we're able to record this podcast. But it's also how we're able to watch Nicolas Cage movies. Okay, I do not know what happened. I don't know what happened. But all of a sudden, we I like it was out of the blue. I literally was like, we should watch some Nicolas Cage you, movies. You are someone who has ideas like that that make no sense. There is no understanding where they come from yeah but they happen regularly but like and they're all really good ideas but the thoughts like i feel like i have a normal train of thought like all day every day for the most part and then every once in a while i have one that just sort of like shoots down that's the only <laughs> way against, i can describe it the current it just of thoughts. it shoots down at me it comes from up here somewhere and it shoots downward like all my thoughts are linear and then i get one that's completely vertical you have a thought zeus in your brain and he <laughs> shoots a thought lightning bolt down he at just, you he takes a spear and he just chucks it at my head and it's like watch nicholas cage movies <laughs> but i all of a sudden was said to, like and i'm a person how many movies do i like to watch none you never i hate movies i don't you, like watching you movies won't, jenna won't let me i'm I've watched so many of your favorite movies. I've watched Wicker Park. I've watched My Best Friend's Wedding. I've watched so many movies that like you were just like, you have to watch this movie. I love this movie. It means so much to me. And you won't even sit down and watch Remember the Titans with me, dude. (laughs) I've been trying to get you to watch that movie for years. We haven't like picked a time, but we can. But that's true. You have been a very good sport and watched a lot of shit movies. But to be fair, I've seen Stuck on You. So, I mean, it's not like I haven't watched any of them. You're welcome. Thank you. I I just, I got like a, a Zeus spear to my brain and was like, I need to watch every Nicolas, listen, every Nicolas Cage movie ever made. Why? So I go on Netflix one night and I'm like, Julian, we should, we should just watch every Nicolas Cage movie ever made. And you're like, okay. So every night we go to Netflix or Hulu or whatever we have, I just type in Nicolas Cage 
and the the body of work is astounding. It's it's, it's beautiful. There are the so of, many. It's a thing of absolute beauty. So we started with like National Treasure, which I while I was watching that and some of these Nicolas Cage movies, I decided the reason why I get so frustrated watching a lot of movies is because I only like two types of movies: incredible movies or horrible movies. It has to be either like it really makes me feel something, it like it really blows my mind or it is the worst thing I've ever seen. That's it. That's, I can't watch a mediocre film. It well, makes me mad. That's perfect for Nick Cage. That that's what I feel like. He's either made really incredible movies or, or just the worst the thing worst you've ever shit seen. I've ever fucking seen. Like National Treasure to me is like when we watched Paul Blart Mall Cop. It is like almost so bad, but it's so enjoyable. Yeah. I love it. I love National it's Treasure. A cinematic there masterpiece. Are s- hundreds of plot holes. <laughs> it is so frustrating. It is a sieve. Of plot holes. <laughs> you can put your pasta in it and strain it with the amount of plot holes in that film. Yeah, it's, um, but you're right. It's enjoyable because it's like, I love my favorite scene that I just comes to mind is when they go to Paris or, f- yeah, they go to Paris, I think, and they fly this like helicopter drone. At this like mini Statue of Liberty to to look at the yeah to look at writing the, the writing it. and he's flying this like clunky helicopter. This is like in what two thousand five two thousand six no I maybe don't a little even later know. I don't know. And he's like enhanced and he just zooms <laughs> all the way in probably like the equivalent of like a two hundred millimeter like focal length and it's like crystal clear and he's flying this like this shaky ass helicopter. <laughs> it's just like oh my god yeah he's Damn. remote flying a helicopter. God my I think my favorite fake movie thing is enhance (laughs) enhance we've hacked the mainframe yeah enhance enhance what is it how are you enhancing footage how are you increasing resolution after it's been filmed and why is the focus voice command operated why can you just say the word enhance and it focuses and zooms in enhance (laughs) enhance nothing's happening it's not real yeah, so we watched National Treasure, then we watched National Treasure 2, and Book then... Book of Secrets, which I realized I've already seen both of them. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, have seen both of those films already. <sighs> Me, the person that doesn't watch any movies, has seen National Treasure 1 and 2. Oh, God. And they're both super lit. And so then, we took a trip down a completely different road, Meryl Streep Avenue, <laughs> and watched Adaptation. <laughs> and my God... That is a roller coaster of a movie. I really liked it. So my only memory of adaptation, and I think this, Rachel said this last night, is yeah. all that you remember is that billboard. The movie where poster. Where he's laying on his side and his head is a plant, right? A, like a broken planter with soil and whatever. And I never saw it. I remember I was a child or young when it came out and I would look at, I remember actually the intersection where the billboard was. It was mm-hmm. on Bundy and Wilshire. And I would see it and I'd be like, that's fucking weird. Adults like weird movies, you know, because it's like my dad would watch it. And that was my only memory of it. So we were like, let's watch Adaptation. And oh my God, like how, how do you even, there's so much to say about that movie. The best I could relate that movie to is it's it's got the same vibe as uh, Burn After Reading, which was, I love that movie, but it's so fucking weird and random and makes kind of no sense sometimes. But it's just like a very weird vibe and there are things that happen and you're like, what? <laughs> and then things happen all at once. And Nick Cage plays two Nick Cages. He pays him and his twin brother. And for some reason, every scene, he's talking to his twin brother. His twin brother sitting on the floor, like sitting on the floor. It's it, it was great. It was aware of itself. I don't care. But I don't care. Yeah, it was. No, I don't there care. Was, there was a meta aspect to it. Like, I, don't, I appreciated that. I don't care about the film. I want to watch... Nicholas Cage's body of work. That film was good. I enjoyed myself. It was I enjoyed myself about too. About orchids. I really liked it, which as the lover of plants, it was great. We got Meryl Streep is sometimes a little funny, gets very fucking meta at the end. Loved it. Good time. But I feel like in the 90s, we all thought Nicolas Cage was this seriously talented actor. And we were talking about this last night. I feel like in the 90s and like parts of the 2000s, right? You have these actors that are on top of the world. There's the, if it's like, 
your dad's like, oh, there's a new Nicolas Cage movie out. We're gonna watch. We should we should go watch yeah. it. Yeah. Because you just rely on the 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 actor to carry the movie, mm -hmm. which is like that old Hollywood model. It's like you're there we for need, the actor. We need someone to headline this film yeah. to put put yeah. the asses in the seats, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. let's get Nicolas Cage, and then people are like, oh, I bet it's probably good. It's Nicolas Cage, mm -hmm. right? So these people walk around. They have the biggest egos. They can do whatever they want. They get paid millions of dollars. And, you know, the worst criticism they might face is like a movie critic, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the internet. Or yeah. some people might say it wasn't very good, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter they'll you're still Nick Cage. book another movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, they might make a couple bad movies, but they're still Julia Roberts. You know, you'll still get another job after that. What? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Which one is that? No, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. But I feel like in the 90s, we all thought he was like this incredible actor, which he is. Yeah. But we thought all of it was an act until you look at the body of Nicolas Cage's work and you're like, was he actually acting during any of that? Is some of this just not acting at all? It's just Nicolas Cage. What's that? The YouTube video that we love so much, Nicolas Cage Freak Out. Nicolas Cage freak out compilation. Yeah. So he's like yelling and screaming. And I'm, I was like, imagine being a screenwriter, right? Like this, this film is your baby. Like you, you write this film and yeah. they're like, all right, we got a big, we got a big actor attached to it. It's Nicolas Cage. Mm -hmm. You bring him in and you do 10 takes of this one scene that you've written very clearly. <laughs> and he's just like yelling and screaming and doing these things. And we're like, I, I guess we got it. I mean, it's not what I wrote or envisioned at all, but thank when you. When he screams the ABCs all the a, way. A, B, C, D, <laughs> E, F, G, A, J, J, K. You're like, yeah, I mean, I just wrote ABC and that was it. But We thank watched you. that whole compilation and we were watching it with Jeff and we were like, none of that was written. <laughs> none of, none of that was written in the script. <laughs> like... There's a scene where he punches Kathy Bates. <laughs> like he slowly walks up to her and punches her. It's just like, I don't know. It's he's one of a kind. He is truly one of a kind. Anyway, so at, we watch adaptation, and then yeah, but it, I don't like the, no, that. was enjoyable. I know. I know. I'm I know. just trying to watch Nicolas no, I understand. Cage. Films. I know. I know. I'm saying we watch adaptation. And then we watch the Humanity the Bureau. Humanity Bureau, which is on Netflix. Oh my god! <laughs> what is that movie? But I will say. Is, it came out in 2017. It was only two years ago. I will say some of some of it was good looking. Like some of the shots were pretty beautiful. I like the way some of it was color graded. I'm trying to go positive first. Some of it was color graded, color graded cool. Um, the the locations they chose to shoot at were nice. But that's not. It's not even the worst movie I've ever seen. No, it is. No, it's it not. Is, no, it is. No, not. No, you need to understand that you're wrong, and it is the worst <laughs> movie you've ever seen. No, it's not. It is such. Horrible writing. The it's like it's like someone who worked at Toys R Us was like, here, use this gun, okay, and action. And they were all just like, bruh, 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 bruh. That, they like no one knew how to hold a gun. That was barely. It was completely immersion breaking. There was no there was no situation where I felt like anyone who was holding a gun was supposed to be ever holding a gun. They're all like these super secret agents. Tell tell them what he does to the kid. So this kid is on the roof. So he's, he, he, for some, the, the premise of the movie is he like falls for this woman. He's like, he works for this like secret agent. It's like this po post-apocalyptic world where he goes out to these people who are still living in this like desolate land that used to be America. And he's like, uh, are you contributing to society? And he looks at their shit and they're like, yes, I am. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Kills them or whatever. So he goes to this like lady's house and with no sort of like dialogue or chemistry or anything, he just is in love with her. And so that's the movie, right? Like he's just with her. Um, no spoilers. I'm not I'm not gonna tell the spoilers. People but be trying to watch the I'm not gonna tell the spoilers. Here. Since it's only a two year old movie, just I'm not tell, gonna tell, tell the spoilers. Tell them what happened. Hold on, to the hold kid. on. I'm getting there. Let me get there. I'm giving a little synopsis. Okay. May I synopsize? <laughs> Por favor. So, so he's at this woman's house. She has the son. The son decides, hey, I'm a son. I'm going to climb up onto the roof because that's what sons do. So he climbs up onto the roof, falls through the roof, is unconscious, right? So he, Nick Cage runs outside. He looks at the kid. He's unconscious. Tries to give him mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. CPR. Listen. Yeah. He, no, mouth to mouth. He didn't give the boy mouth to mouth. He did like CPR where he like did his chest. Oh, maybe it was CPR. But anyway, he listened 
he like put his ear to his mouth and he did CPR <laughs> and nothing was working. The kid was just like laying there. So he sits the kid up and smacks him on the back and the kid wakes up. He's like, hey, I'm okay. Like he didn't spit anything out. He wasn't choking. He just got slapped because on the he back. he fell off the roof of a house. Well, everyone knows that when you fall off a house, you, you need to get slapped Nick awake. Cage style slapped in the back. Like basically just woke the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Um, God damn it, dude. And I... I swear to God, he called like a full, full on assault rifle a Glock at one point, which is just, <laughs> I think that happened. Anyway, sorry. But it's, it's, it, I just want to watch every Nick Cage. Also, film. they use the green screen in every car scene. They did. They're driving a car and he's just doing this. It's like an old time, old timey movie, you know, and the green screens in the back. It's like, what? What? Why would someone do that? It changes. Every, it doesn't even feel in, even remotely real. Sorry. I don't know. It's just, there's something interesting to me about what you just meant. About him as a person and him as an actor. Like, I I read the the headline the other day. Is the title of this podcast going to be called Earthquakes and Nick Cage Movies? (laughs) I'm just wondering, is that what we're doing? The the headline was Nicolas Cage seen hanging out with his third wife shortly after divorcing his fourth wife. And his son, and then you saw the headline. That no, it was, was it was a Reddit post. It was okay, Nick Reddit Cage post. walking with his son, but looks like his son's imaginary friend. And his son's like, you know, wearing normal clothes, like holding like a DS or something. And Nicolas Cage is wearing a top hat and a cane. Or he some looks shit. like like off brand Willy Wonka. <laughs> Weird. But I'm um, I'm just interested to see a person's entire body of work because you know at some point he was this huge box office like very talented well-respected actor yeah and i want to see like just what happened yeah and uh, through because a lens still, that, through a still, 2019 lens like what does it look like now yeah because he's still highly respected in acting like no one's like no man that works. guy can't act yeah like, no he still works absolutely yeah, not yeah. and i just think it's interesting sometimes you you take jobs like that that you are like yeah, it sounds like a cool concept or like maybe you like the script and some of them are very good. Like I watched another one while you fell asleep with Elijah Wood. I think it's called The Trust. And some of this fucking sound design and that, like some of the cinematography, like really fucking good, you know, but I've never heard of this film before. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's seen it. Yeah. And he's, you know, amazing. And it's just cool yeah. to see someone's career and like maybe figure out why they said yes to do that movie. Like, is it purely because you need a, a paycheck this year or like you don't care or you like the concept or I don't know what it is. I see your point. It's just cool. I see your point. And, and he I'm, makes me fucking laugh. Yeah. No, no. I, I get your point of watching the whole body of work from an actor. And I also kind of am starting to understand where the, the thought bolt came from um, of watching Nick Cage's body of work because I feel like you are a person who likes to look deeper into like memes sometimes, right? And look past like why it's funny and maybe just like, let's just understand everything about it. That's what you are. You're an analytic person. You're like, I need to understand every single thing about this person or situation to make it all clear for me. And to be perfectly honest, Nick Cage is kind of a perfect subject for that. He makes me laugh really Because he's like Nick Cage. It's like, why not watch his whole filmography and understand like when he, when he was this and when he turned into that and like what <laughs> what it all looked like and watch it now. Yeah. It's very entertaining. I mean, we're watching the movies every night. We'll turn on a Nick Cage movie. So I'm catching like, depending on how tired I am, half a movie to like a quarter of it. The Humanity Bureau, I made it pretty much the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, we finish I them like the next day or two time. days later. Yeah. We'll try and pick up where we left off. It's not like we're watching a movie every night. But we have a lot of movies to go. We have a lot of content. I mean, what's so fun through. about it, though, is that you can just type it into anywhere and there's just like a, Cage. a bunch of Nicolas Cage yeah. movies that you can watch for free if you have Netflix or a streaming service. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Oh, Knight Rider. Oh, I can't wait till we get to Knight Rider. Face Off, Con Air. Like, I've never seen Face Off. Dude, it's it's about to go down. Yeah. I, I'm like, there's so many action films, Gone in 60 Seconds, like, and then he, I feel like there's a high volume in which he's playing like a cop. <laughs> like, yeah, with a mustache. <laughs> yeah. <I> just. <laughs> it's almost like he, he said to his agent, I want to be a cop, but I'm an actor. Make me a cop as much as you can. I have seen like The Wicker Man, like I saw some of that stuff. I feel like The That's Wicker the Man was... When people started being like, all right, Nick Cage, we're not just going to see whatever the fuck you make anymore. Take it down a notch, guy. It got pretty bad reviews. Is that when he punches Kathy Bates? No. 
I don't know. Is that when he has the bees? That's the bees. That's the bees. That's how to get burned, how to get burned, (laughs) how to get burned, how to get burned. That one. So, I don't know. I I just, I'm interested to watch every Nicolas Cage movie that's ever made and report back to you on my findings. That's my current study. Next week, we're having Nick Cage on the podcast. Let's just get a cut out of Nick Cage and put it right here. (laughs) And interview him. Well, our trainer, <laughs> Put sound <effects>. our trainer <laughs> Dustin, our tra- <laughs> the Nicholas Cage soundboard. Uh, our trainer Dustin has like this sick fucking pinup tattoo on his arm, and it's a, pin, pretty- a pinup doll tattoo yeah, is pin-up just like a full girl. size girl, like like head to toe body, yeah. but like you know, and it's style. like pretty old. Like he's clearly had it for a very long time, and he, I guess, wasn't like a super fan of how the face looked which is incredibly difficult to tattoo. So he had had it just lasered the off. The face is lasered off. So the whole pinup is there, but there's no face. Right. It's black and gray. So it's it doesn't it's not like a color picture with no face. It's no. not creepy at all. It's like the tattoo is relatively faded. And uh, he was like, you guys got any ideas what I could put there? And even before I started all this, I was like, Nicolas Cage's face. Because <laughs> the, the legs sort of poke out in his shirt sleeve, so you can see her legs and her lower body, but if you just pulled it up and it was just Nicolas Cage's <laughs> face, like, that is a fucking tattoo. That is a dope-ass tattoo. I would Why do have it. I had Nicolas Cage in my brain for this long? What's going on? I don't know. The fuck, dog? <laughs> What's going on? Man. I'm just... It's the most fun I've had watching movies in a while. I just cannot wait to see the next Nicolas Cage film. You just don't know what you're going to get. No. Life is like a box of Nicolas Cage movies. You just never know what you're going to get. But you know it's about to get wild at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Maybe several points. So we'll keep you posted on our endeavors um, into the Nicolas Cage's sphere. Leave you- into, the, into the Nicolas Cage. Wow. Leave your favorite Nicolas Cage movie in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> or or don't. <laughs> it's the Nicolas Cage. Jenna and Julian enter. Only one will win. Has he done any like rom coms? I desperately want to yeah. see. Should I pull a, up his filmography? Real a quick? Nicolas Cage rom com. I want to see him in a role other than like a cop. Because that's what I've seen primarily at this point. Okay, let's let's look at this on IMDb. Okay, filmography. Known for he, Face Off. I know he's done a couple of horror films. Oh, he was in The Crudes. Oh, no, he's in The Crudes, too. I spoiled it. He's in a movie called Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> that is next. <laughs> find it. How do we find it? He's in a find movie it. called Jiu-Jitsu. How do we find it? Oh my god, we have to watch How that. How do we find it? Okay, wait Julian. Minute. He, wait a minute, he's in... He was into the Spider-Verse, he was the Spider-Man noir. That makes perfect sense. That makes per- I rem- Actually, I remember listening to that and being like, that's Nick Cage. That's dope. Um, oh my god, we have to watch Jiu-Jitsu. Okay, I feel like you should... What's that, Rabbit or something where people can watch films with you? Rabbit, it's called Rabbit. That's it's something that you should... We've never even used that. It's a website where you can watch movies. I don't know if the, all the movies are on there, though. Oh, damn. You watch movies and you can like... It's like Twitch streaming. There's because a chat Because I people. desperately want to group watch jujitsu with you while you react to jujitsu. Oh, we should do it. We should totally do that. How can we legally do that? I think Rabbit makes makes that legal. I don't know how it works, but I, I think people either. do that. We'll look into it because we'll that would be a fun so he, group activity. He's Grug in The Croods. He was in The Croods and The Croods 2, which is coming next year. Grug. I don't remember, forget who that is. But The Croods is one of our favorite movies. I love it. Love The Croods. Ghost Rider, obviously. Drive Angry. Wait, what? I thought you were looking up rom-coms. Oh, Kick-Ass. No, that's not a rom-com. Mm, um, Bangkok Dangerous. Is that a rom-com? I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't see any rom coms. Matchstick Men. I want to see like the, the glory days of the 90s. Sunny. Yeah, you got to keep going back. All these are like the 2000s. It could happen to you. Isn't that a fucking. 
You're asking the king of not seeing movies. There's I don't so know. many. City of Angels. That's it. That's the one with uh, Meg. Meg Ryan. That's the one I'm thinking of. Do you remember that movie? No. That Goo Goo Dolls song? Absolutely not. But these are like fucking films, man. I mean, it's it's a body of work. It's incredible. That is a body of work. Wild at Heart looks like a rom-com. We Not have a rom-com. to watch jujitsu. Vampire's Kiss. Is that the, I'm a vampire, I'm a vampire. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to watch these old ones. These look so good. How do we find them? Do we live near a blockbuster? Valley. He's in a film called Valley Girl. Okay. You know what we I'm should so do? I'm so excited. We should illegally pirate all of these movies and <laughs> sell it as the Nick Cage movie collection. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and watch it with your friends. I just want to see what the synopsis of this movie is. I'm Jiu Jitsu? So, yeah, yeah please sorry. tell us what this is. No, I don't want the IMDb app. Uh, plot summary A new sci fi martial arts franchise from Dimitri Logothetis, director producer of Kickboxer Retaliation. Just what I want to see. This is, I can't. Why jujitsu could be a B movie fan's dream come true. Oh. We're B movie fans. That's we what are. we are. No, 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 no. Lower than that. We're I want, C movie I fans. I want an F movie. I want to see who else is. Oh, oh, I can't wait to watch this. He's got a beard in it. Wait, are there any actual like, like MMA Gracie's? fighters in yeah. it? Um, probably. I'm not recognizing any of them though. I'm not recognizing any of the cast actually, which makes me so excited. I'm just going to discover so much when I watch jujitsu with Nick Cage. You can't, you didn't find like the synopsis? That was all that was oh, all I did. Damn. Yeah. I think we'll leave it up to honestly it's going to be a surprise. Joking. I think we should do this on Rabbit. Yeah, we should if figure we out could, a way. If we could figure out a way, we should watch jujitsu on Rabbit. That'd be so fun. I'd honestly watch a lot of Nick Cage movies on Rabbit. It would be so fun. Be pretty great. Group watch Nick Cage movies. We should do that. Friends, what do you say? Join us on our quest. <laughs> Let's make enough popcorn for everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring your popcorn. Um, I I can't believe it, but I think this might be my favorite podcast we've done. Earthquakes and Nick Cage movies. Hell yeah. Best podcast ever. I think he's becoming my favorite actor at this point. Oh? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> why? Why is that your reaction? Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm okay. just. I'm learning right. new things. What? No. What's wrong with Nicolas Cage being my favorite actor? Not a goddamn thing. I'll tell you one thing. Once Thank I watch you. Jujitsu, he's gonna be my favorite person. That's not what only I'm actor. saying. That's what I'm saying. All right. Well, if you don't have popcorn, you can postmate it. Use code Jenna Julian. We'll actually look into doing the thing on Rabbit. I don't know if all the movies in the world are available for it or how that even works. Please, but I hope Jiu-Jitsu starring Nicolas Cage is on there or else I'm going to be devastated. If not, I'll just say fuck it and download it and then watch it on stream on Twitch. Julian. And we can watch Jiu-Jitsu on Twitch. What? Can't do that. Come on. They're not, they don't do even that. know about Twitch. They, they, they Who? Don't even, the director of Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> He's directing Jiu-Jitsu 2, the streets right now. He has no idea about Twitch. <laughs> two two jits, two, two furious. <laughs> two jits, two furious. <laughs> two jits, two furious. It's soon. like Fast and the Furious, but they're just running while they're grappling in the middle of a Tokyo street. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Cage. They're running and grappling at the same time. They're just choking each other while sprinting down the street. <laughs> oh, God. What have we done? We've enjoyed ourselves. <laughs> That's correct. Oh, you woke up. Yes. Mm. Don't. See, that's why they're unbothered during an earthquake because you're just constantly See, like bumping them I'm around. prepping them. That's what I'm doing. Julian, no. Okay. You know what? I, I have jujitsu to watch. I have to go. Okay. Fine. Me too. What do you think I'm doing later? Watching jujitsu. What do you think I'm doing in the morning? Not going to jujitsu. Watching Watching (laughs) jujitsu. Oh, man. Um, Thank you guys for hanging out and listening and watching uh, another podcast. Thank you also for letting us take off last week for the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'll be back next week and we'll be live on stream all week on Twitch and maybe Rabbit. Who knows? 
please. The crazier things have happened. I hope so. Be good. Be more like Nick Cage every day. And be safe if you're in Southern California. Get your go bags ready. See you guys next week. Bye.